Okay. Well, I thought I would sit and talk to you here for a little bit and give you a, a little bit of an update. We have been dealing with a heat wave here, so I've been trying to stay inside in the air conditioning and Creature doesn't like the heat either. I don't wanna go into a whole lot of certain things cause I don't have a whole lot of information about a lot of things, but some weird things did happen. I was up in my bedroom a week ago or so and I heard outside behind the house here, sheriff's department, present yourself like really loudly. Like the police were out there yelling and there was all these police like blocking in the entryway and they ended up kicking in my neighbor's door and had the dogs with them and all of that. I tried to film it a little bit, but it was hard to get through the window with the screen and I wasn't gonna go out there, okay? I just didn't wanna get in the way, it felt weird. There was this weird like, ah, okay, not my business, stay out of it. It didn't appear that anyone was hurt. I didn't see anyone get arrested. I don't know what happened. So there was another police situation in my neighborhood with the door getting kicked in, which is strange, which is making me feel like, is there something weird with this area, like some weird energy over here? It makes me a little uncomfortable. I also got a message from Benny asking me <laughs> if I would like to hang out with him and have sex. I did not respond, I did not respond. But let me tell you, this is a very bad sign because that means he's still thinking about me. That means he doesn't realize what he did wrong. And maybe he doesn't even remember what happened or doesn't think he did anything wrong. I don't know, but it's just a bad sign. And uh, I don't know, well, there's a whole lot I can do about it, but just not respond and just hope that he doesn't show up over here, you know? And in reality, until he's arrested, until he's in jail, I'm not really safe. Okay. Here we are in the most comfortable living position, sleeping position in the house. Why? For me. The couch downstairs? Yes, the couch right here. I was just explaining and why this not feels... Us. Unimportant. That's why I didn't want to film in the house. I wanted to go outside and film this because they're going to come in here. And I just think it's more interesting filming it outside. Um, Even though it's hot out, it's just nicer out there. Okay. Can you, can you leave us alone when we're done? Time to eat. We'll do that later. You want to sit right there? I don't. Where do you? Where do you want to go? Right here, huh? Okay, this is fine, I guess. Okay. <laughs> it does feel like we're in a different place because of humidity and it's hot and I'm not used to that here. I'm used to that when we like, we go on trips somewhere. What do you think happens next? With what? Life. <sighs> what happens next in life? Rachel, I don't know. I don't have the answers, but pretty much everything I thought was going to happen didn't happen. All the things I thought for sure would happen didn't happen, which makes me feel awful because I was counting on those things. Yeah. I just thought I was going to have a good group of friends, and I'd be married, and I'd have a decent career, and or something like that. Or What was the career you thought? I have no, I thought I was going to go to film school, and I thought that I was going to have some sort of job in that, or whoever I was going to meet there was going to be important, you know, like maybe I would meet the man I was going to marry there, or who knows, maybe I would be a video editor, or maybe I'd be a producer, or maybe I'd be a director. I didn't know. Are you willing to share why that didn't work out for you, your career? Is that something you feel comfortable sharing? What would you say about it? What did you want to say about it? I'm just asking you. Sure, go for it. Okay, Kristen has a, um, um, a learning disability. Yes, I have a learning disability. I've been in special education classes my whole life. I was always isolated. I think that's part of the reason why I'm used to isolation. And it might have been what triggered me having social anxiety disorder. I don't know. It's like when everyone treats you differently because of the class you're in, you know, and they act like there's something wrong with you. You have to go over here with these special kids. And the other thing is that that kind of, I think a lot of people thought that that meant you were stupid. But a lot of those people were actually more intelligent. They just needed things explained to them a little bit differently and they needed more time with their work. I never had the option or the, I don't know, the ability, I guess. I don't even know what the word would well, be. You, you could have made knitting videos. Oh yeah, that was yeah. my mother 
tried to force me to do that like that was going to be something oh yeah people want to watch knitting videos anyways so i guess well, to sum it up there that's where life went and really any other options there i'm not i'm not trusting plane going over right now i i don't have a short way to explain it i'm sorry i just don't what was your big moment in high school my big moment in high school yeah, your big moment whenever i would do a video it was like a thing because everyone couldn't believe there was a person my age that could edit videos and could do this at their house and and could do it so well i guess i remember when i was in high school i i think i was in high school i had to go over i wasn't I didn't have to or wanted to went over to lake ridge for to, to watch kristen's video being played in front of the class or the so, uh, auditorium i got an award for being one of like the top five students who had achieved something they couldn't believe, which is silly. And so they had an assembly and they played the video I made for my sociology class. Okay. I know, I'm in a very weird filming location. I am in my parents' coat closet. And you may wonder why I am hiding in the coat closet. Well, it's because they're sleeping and I don't wanna wake them up and I need to sit and talk to you. So here we are in the coat closet because I know that no one can hear you if you're upstairs. Anyways, I had to jump in here because the part I filmed with my sister just got really confusing. She kept interrupting me and the story I was telling just started not making sense anymore. And so I thought I would just sit here and tell it to you since she wanted me to talk about this. I wasn't even necessarily gonna tell you the story, but because she wanted to talk about it, I'm gonna sit and tell this story. I feel a little silly talking about high school since that was such a long time ago now, but she thought this was important to understand me and who I am, so here's the story. <laughs> and I'm gonna have a little anxiety talking about it because it was a bad thing. Okay. So when I was a senior in high school, I was 18, and I was in an advanced class called sociology and a lot of people were surprised that I got into this class because I was in a special education program and a lot of people thought if you were in the special education program that you were stupid people just assume this people would avoid me people were very mean because of this and I was also very good at editing video back then and at that time nobody edited video themselves at that time it was like unheard of, especially for an 18 year old to have the ability to do this and do it well. And I was one of those people. And it was always a passion of mine to make videos. And that's part of the reason why I have a YouTube channel because I'm making videos again. Anyways, for the finals project in my sociology class, we had to work in a group with like two or three other kids and the teacher picked a topic for us. Now. I grew up in a place that was very stuck up, an upscale place called Lake Oswego. And I don't recommend ever living here. The people here are just so judgmental and they are so disrespectful and it really made growing up here awful. And so I always had this need to kind of talk about that. Anyways, the teacher chose the topic minorities. Okay, and I knew as soon as that teacher chose minorities as a topic of the group I'm in, okay, when people are already going to be judgmental of me and weird, I knew it was going to be a problem because <sighs> being in Lake Oswego, none of the other students could think of any other minorities but black people, which is stupid because there were a lot of minorities. And I knew this was going to be a problem and I knew it was going to reflect on me because I already had like people wanting to judge me anyways. So in this assignment, we had to have a visual, an audio, and a written. And because I know that every time I did a video in school, because I did a lot of videos in school and they would play it in front of the class, I always got an A. And I would always pass the class then. And then everyone was so amazed that I could do it, which I always thought was silly and, and all of that. So, because it had to be black people as a minority because people in Lake Oswego couldn't think of anything else. Yes, I'm making fun of Lake Oswego because I think that they're just crazy. 
I went to different places in Lake Oswego in the town and I went up to random people and said, do you have any black friends? And they would just be like, hmm, I think I know this person. Hmm, and they couldn't think of anybody. The whole point is to make fun of Lake Oswego to make them look stupid, like they can't think of anybody that's a minority in their town. And so the whole joke was, okay, couldn't find anyone here in Lake Oswego, we have to go to downtown Portland and then go down to down, downtown Portland. And there's something moving in the closet. And oh, how did you get in here? How did you get in here? This door's closed and there's no way here. How did you get in here? Oh my goodness. That concerns me. I'm gonna have to check out that later. How did she get in here? Anyways, <laughs> and I thought no one could hear me. Anyways, <sighs> what was I thinking? See, okay, 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 you're fine. <laughs> I'm trying to make a video. It was the day before this whole assignment had to be turned in because I had a couple different people I was gonna interview and nobody followed through. So last minute, a friend of mine had to go downtown and do this. So I found this random black lady walking in the street and we came up to her and we said, do you have any stories about people like judging you for your race? And she said, yes, actually today, something happened to me in the store where the security guard was following me around and I felt like it was just because of my race. And so I got her to tell that story. And then I got another person to tell their story. And I made a huge mistake when I made this video because it was supposed to be like, Lake Oswego knew nothing and so we have to go downtown. And so there was this dramatic sound in the music, like boom, 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 boom. And I had this loud music play and I had a title go up. And I, I don't wanna have any problems and I feel like people are gonna judge me. The relationship was such in the past and I it meant no harm by it whatsoever. But I just thought it was kind of humorous to say, oh, the hunt, like dramatic, the hunt. And some people took it as like, killing. I didn't mean it like killing. I meant it like searching. It should have said the search. And I edited this video in the middle of the night, the day before finals, up till 7.30 in the morning. Like I didn't sleep at all till I had to go to school and then play the video. It was like just a dramatic thing to get this video done. And I didn't even think that anyone would be offended by it. I thought people would get the humor of making fun of Lake Oswego and then you know, trying to bring awareness to an issue. And it's one of those topics I always try to stay away from, even though like I have gone and, look, and looked at stuff downtown for the Black Lives Matter movement and I film stuff like that. And you know, I'm very open-minded to hearing other people's situations and stories and I like those things. And you know, every people, I feel like it won't matter what I say, there's gonna be someone that's mad no matter what I do. Just kind of how life goes. I clearly have all different types of friends. I have all different races and friends and different ages and different upbringings and all of that. So no one should think in any way that I'm judging anyone for those things. I've even been friends with people that believe things that I don't believe, you know, just because I thought they were an interesting person. But as my sister will say in the video, she'll say that she doesn't think this is gonna be a problem and she doesn't think anyone's accusing me of this now. I'm trying to make this as short as I can. I play this video in front of my class and everyone was just so blown away about how amazing it was. And it was like, kind of like, wow, how can this person that we judge so harshly in these special education classes, this person we thought was stupid, how did she do something better than us? How did she make a video and I have no idea how to do this. And so anyways, everyone was really impressed. And then a couple months later, I ended up getting an award in front of the whole school at this assembly. It had some really weird name and I can't think of it now. It was just, it meant that you, you accomplished something unexpected. And they selected five people from the whole school and I was one of those people. And they were gonna play my video. And back then I had to bring the tape in on a VHS, I couldn't, do it any other way back then. So when they went to play it in front of the whole school, like families came, like my parents came, my sister came, and it was like a huge deal. The player, the VHS player, 
was so old they messed up my video so no one got to see it correctly they couldn't hear what was being said all they knew was it about minorities and black people and that was awful I had so many dirty looks I got the reputation for being racist I was so humiliated and embarrassed I started crying and I couldn't stop it they wouldn't stop the tape the, st the tape would like pause and then like speed up and slow down and go and there was nothing I could do about it and I just started crying and I go oh, no this was supposed to be like me showing people this whole school that had judged me so much you know that I was that I was really worth knowing you know and that I'm not so stupid anyways but then it just gave me this awful other reputation and there was nothing I could do about it and it's not like I could go hey everybody I'm not racist and I hope you know as as one of my followers that I'm not racist obviously I have all kinds of friends but it was just so humiliating at the very end of school like right before graduation and everything to have this happen and it's kind of like I can't catch a break no matter what I do you know it's kind of the story of my life I keep trying and I put myself out there even with all of my social anxiety and all of the judgment I get and all of the setbacks and then when I have these little moments you know it's like they just get stolen from me and it keeps happening and I don't know why and I keep smiling and I keep laughing to get through it but it's really kind of taking a toll on me what happens next yeah what does happen next I don't I don't know if I want to know <laughs> because I really thought that by now in life something really great would have happened and you know the normal stuff I would have been able to feel normal in life because I've never felt normal I never got to feel normal. I didn't have permission to feel normal in school or around other people. Or even when I went in public, there'd always be somebody making some sort of inappropriate comment. Did you feel like when I was growing up that people were really weird with me and like... Yeah, I did. Can you think of a situation? There's lots of reasons for that too. I don't know what the reason, right reason is though. But you noticed it. Oh uh, yeah, I did. I noticed that when you were younger. I wasn't around you when you were younger. Well, you haven't... You're not around me very much now, so we can't say about now, yeah. but... When we lived together here in this house here, and I was a teenager, like guys would be weird. They would like follow me around. I had like a stalker. I had like, anyways, I'm not really trying to talk about all my childhood years. I think people would like to understand you better. Okay, right? what do you think is something about me that would help people understand me that you know that other people wouldn't know? Okay, Kristen, when she was a kid, almost died a baby yes that's correct okay I'm back in the closet hi <laughs> some other stuff didn't make sense that I need to explain okay so my sister thinks you need to know this about me to understand me better so when I was born I wasn't expected to live I don't remember all the details of the story. It was told to me a long time ago. I am not going to go upstairs and wake up my parents and ask them to talk about when I almost died. Okay, that's just kind of creepy. So I'm going to try to remember the best I can. So when I was born, I was very sick and I had one collapsed lung and I had a very low white blood cell count. So low that you couldn't survive like that. It was like a very seriously ill person doesn't even have this low of a white blood cell count. I was born in the 80s and at the time they had just come out with a white blood cell transfusion. It was new and they gave it to me and it saved my life. That's what saved my life. And I was the miracle baby that year at the hospital I was born at and it was like a really big deal. I guess I was in intensive care for a long time afterwards and all of that. Of course, I have absolutely no memory of it. I was just born, but my sister thinks this like really affected the way I am now. Like maybe it affected my development, you know, or my brain, or maybe that's why I have social anxiety. Maybe that's why I'm so sensitive to things. I feel like I'm a lot more sensitive to things than other people. So, I don't know. 
I don't know, maybe it's interesting that you brought that up because I haven't thought about that in a long time. I think that's a bigger deal than you're thinking. Why? I just think it changes everything about you. I'm Why? not trying to be Really? Rude. Why? I'm, I'm just surprised. saying that, it, that, that changes your personality in completely. And Why? your makeup, your physical makeup. Okay, so you think because when I was born, I don't have any memory of this. I mean, I was you just born. You think because I almost died and wasn't expected to live when I was born that that changed who I am? I think it did. No. In a good way or a bad way? I think it, um, well, it does a lot of things. Maybe it's why you think about death in a certain way when you're younger. I have always had a very interesting relationship with death. I have always viewed dying differently than other people. And it has made a lot of people very upset with me. People want to think death is negative. It's not. It's just the next step into whatever there is. Dreams, and I've always known that. I've always had really intense dreams that felt real. Um, I learned, here's the funny thing. Here's how I learned to, to read. And this is how I learned how to type well. Computer games. So I was very good at a computer game called Diablo. And because you had to talk by typing to people and you had to read, that was the only way you could communicate. That's how I learned how to read well and that's how I learned how to type. And that was from just playing a computer game. So that saved your life? It didn't save my life, it just that's how I learned how to do that. I don't think any... What do you mean save my life? What would save my life would have a good man in my life that's a real person that says, hey, let's, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would save my life. <laughs> and thank you for listening, you guys, to our random thoughts and of my funny. sister and I hanging out. <laughs> you have dirt all over your butt. Do you? Probably. Do you think you like wet off my butt? <laughs> I also filmed some cute little things about Creature, you know, out on the balcony and getting ready for bed and little things like that. So sometimes I just pick up the camera when I think something's cute or could be interesting, not knowing if I'm going to use it in a video or not. But I decided at the end of this video, I'll put it there for you to watch. Okay. <laughs> All right, wild animals. Well, if you haven't already, remember to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot and to always have patience with people because we are all going through something. Okay, I will see you next time. I opened up the door there for Creature to see how hot it is. See how hot it is out there, Creature? Yeah, it's pretty warm, pretty hot, a little bit humid. What do you think? What do you think about the hot air? Oh, you gonna go out? I don't want to leave this door open too long though because the air conditioning's on though, creature. Yeah, you can definitely feel the heat. It's pretty quiet up here. Everyone must be in with their air conditioning on. Well, creature, I'm gonna close this door. I don't want to let the air out, okay? See, I don't think you can actually see in when the door is closed. I think the light is just reflecting off and he just sees his reflection. So I think it confuses him. Creature, you're fine. I just don't want to let the heat in the house, okay? Okay, you want to come in? You can stay out, but I just don't. Okay. Hey, Creature. Sleeping? Sleepy kitten? Sleeping in the corner? Yeah, I know. It's a hot day. It's a really hot day. I got the air conditioning cranked up as high as I can put it, Creature. I know, you got fur. Is it colder laying against this than on the couch? I don't want to open the balcony for you because it's too hot. 
Too hot. Okay, we try. Okay. Dazzling Topher. Dazzling Topher. Okay. Yeah. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's cute. <laughs>